Welcome to Tech Tools for Test Success, preparing for the next generation assessments. This tutorial is for grades 9 through 12, physical science. It's the performance-based assessment tutorial. This tutorial may be different from tests that you've taken in the past. It will be totally online and completely digital. This tutorial is to help you understand how to use the tools and resources available to you for this test. This is a video, so at any time, please feel free to pause or rewind the video to better understand the information being presented to you. What we're going to do today is learn about the tools available to us on the new Ohio State test. All right, scientists, let's log into a Chromebook. Hopefully you have one in front of you so that you can follow along to better understand how to use the tools we will be reviewing. So log in to nextgen.nuaka.org. Again, that is nextgen.nwoca.org. So hopefully you've arrived at this website. What we're going to do is we're going to take one of the practice tests together to learn about the resources that will be available to us. Let's click on the Ohio Online Field Test Portal for grades 4 through 12. For today's purposes, we're going to sign in as a guest. So I'll simply hit sign in. We're going to select a grade level. Select your grade level. For today, I'm going to choose grade 10. I'll click yes. Now, we're going to see all of the tests that are available to a 10th grader. Today, we're going to work with the Physical Science PBA. This year, this spring, you'll be taking both the PBA, which stands for Performance-Based Assessment, and then near the end of the year, you'll be taking the EOI, which stands for end of year assessment. So together, let's click on PBA. All right, here are some of the settings that are going to be available to you on the test that you're going to be taking, the performance-based assessment. I know you're in science class, but we don't want to do experiments during the test on which features we like. Let's get familiar and comfortable with them beforehand. So you're going to have different color choices. What that means is how will you see the screen? Right now I have the black on white. That is the default. That is what we see in front of us. We see the black font with the white background. You can also choose light yellow, light blue, light magenta, reverse contrast, or white on navy. Please don't be, please don't use the test to decide which color choice you would like to use. We're going to choose masking on for today's sample test as well. So I'll hit select. All that this page is asking, are these the features that I want turned on? I'm going to hit yes, start my test. This page is very useful. I may even encourage you to pause through the video right now and review some of these test instructions and help with your teacher. You can read through these with your teacher or on your own. I'm not going to read through these right now because this is what I will be reviewing during the video. So I will click begin test now. Now we are ready to take the science performance-based assessment for grades 9 through 12. These are the features that I would like to draw your attention to. Today, I'm not going to be focusing on the content of science. What I am going to focus on are the digital features that you have available to you while you are taking your test. First, I would like to start with the question mark up here. If we click on that question mark, what this does is it takes us to the help guide. This is that section and it explains everything with written directions. 
This is what we are going to be talking about in today's video. So I'm simply going to X out of there. Up along the top, we'll stay up here, there is a question drop down menu. So I can choose question one. Questions two through four are grouped, as are questions five through eight. Now, up here, we see our navigation tools. These arrows allow me to go to the next question, so I can flip through these questions. Also, if we notice over here, since these questions are grouped, I can get there through, through these tools as well. So I'm going to go all the way back to question number one. The next icon up here is the save icon. I can click save to save my answers. Next, we have pause. Let's click the pause icon to better examine the pause feature. When you pause the test, you're going to get this box. It's going to ask you if you are sure you want to pause the test. If you pause the test for more than 20 minutes, you are not going to be able to go back and change answers that you've previously marked. If you, for some reason, do not uh, navigate through your test or make any changes on your test for 20 minutes, it will automatically pause the test for you and save your answers. So I'm going to say no, I don't want to pause the test. I can end the test, obviously, by hitting the square. I would not encourage you to do this until you have completely finished today's test. Now, we are going to move over to some of the testing tools so that we understand how to use these before the day of the test. All right. So, several of you, when you take a paper and pencil test, might cover up parts of the question or different answers. You have that ability on this performance-based assessment. Maybe you use your hand or a pencil or a pen or another sheet of paper. I'm going to show you how to do that digitally. All you need to do is click on the masking icon, go over to the area that you want to mask, click, and then as you drag your mouse, Click again, and that will create a mask. Now, if I don't want to use this anymore, I have to click that off. Because if I don't, if I leave it on, anytime I click, anywhere I click, it will automatically do that. So I'm going to click that off and get rid of these. All I do to get rid of these is click on the X. Next. For some questions on your science performance-based assessment, you will uh, need to look at the periodic table. So periodically, throughout today's test, you can click on periodic table, and the periodic table will appear for you. Now notice, you may have to scroll up and down to see the entire table. You can use this bar over here. You can use the trackpad on your Chromebook. If you use two fingers and do a light swipe up or down, it will move up or down as well. If you want a mouse, now would be the time to alert your teacher that you would like a mouse for the day of the test. So I don't need this. What I'm going to do is X out of here. You also have the ability to have formulas for it provided for you. So if I click on the formulas, notice the reference sheet that is available to me. It has all these formulas. Again, I can scroll up, down or I can scroll up. It's not big enough in that view to see all of the formulas. So you're going to have to scroll up or down. So if you're not sure if there's more, just do some scrolling. And I'll X out of here as well. And again, I can move this to wherever I need it. For the science PBA, you also have the use of a calculator. When you are allowed to use the calculator on the PBA, the calculator icon will appear for that question. So I'll click on that, and we can see the different functions that this calculator has. I would encourage you 
to look at the calculator and even play with the calculator for a short amount or for some time right now to become comfortable with that. Teachers, if you'd like to pause the video, even walk the students through how to use this, that would be good so that they know specifically how this should be used for answering questions on a science test. Another tool that you have available to you is the notes tool. Some of you, when you take tests, you like to write alongside the question different ideas that you might have. You like to scribble down different thoughts. This would be the place where you could do that. So in here, I would put different ideas I have. And then I could hit save and close, and it'll go away. Or, and if I want to reopen that, I just hit the notes page, and it's all right there. Again, this can be moved around so that you can see different parts of the question. So I'll cancel out of that. Another nice feature that you have is the line reader. Several of you may use a pen or piece of paper to help you stay online when you're reading test questions. This is the digital way to do that. So if you noticed, when I hit the line reader, that blue appeared on the screen there. I'll do it again so you can see. Now, to have this move up or down, I use the arrow keys to go down or the arrow keys to go up as well. If I don't want these anymore, I simply click the line reader and it disappears. Now, there's other tools that are available to you. If I click on this icon with the three bars, which is referred to as the content menu, it looks similar to the settings menu in Google. So let's click on that together. For each question, there is a tutorial on how to answer the question. Now what I mean by that, so if I click on tutorial, it will show you how to answer the question. It doesn't tell you what the answer is or even give you hints to what the answer is. But this is a drag and drop question. If you notice the red box there has directions that explain what to do. I'm not going to watch this entire video during the video I'm creating, so I would encourage you to watch this either as a class or on your own individually. Another feature that this has is to mark the question for review. So when I do that, if we look up here, question one is marked. It also marks it right here. It changes that icon. Watch what happens. It goes from full, when it's not marked, to fold it over. Several of you, when you take paper and pencil tests, may circle the question to, go, to remember to go back to it at a later time. Now, there are a few other features that are in the context menu that you do not see when you simply click on here. Let's say you thought this line was very, very important. What I can do is I can highlight it. That Those three icons that showed up will not show up for you on the test. In order to highlight that, I highlight it. I dragged over those words. And I can right-click on the Chromebook. A right-click is simply a two-finger tap. And I'll click highlight selection. Notice how it highlighted the selection for me. To unhighlight or reset it, I right click again and I click reset highlighting. Now, it's very important to understand that on this PBA, you need to read each question carefully. And most questions will be two to three part questions. So you want to read all the information very carefully. Then you want to understand what it's asking you to do. So you place only one object in each box. Your objects are over, over here. So let's say that this goes here. I would put that there. Let's say this goes here. But then I thought about it and I said, whoa, that doesn't go there. I would hit the delete button, and then hit that box. I don't want any of these there. What I did was, was wrong. 
All right, so that is how you would answer that. I will go on to the next question. Questions two to four are going to use the same information for those three questions. Now, if I would like this information expanded, because I don't necessarily like scrolling down, I would use this triangle. Let's see what happens. Notice how hitting those arrows enlarged this information. Let's hit those arrows again. Let's also hit the context menu. There are no options available at this time for that. So again, notice how I have to scroll up and down along this left side. When I go to the next question, it's this same information here. This question is going to ask me to answer in an extended response. The typing tools that you have are similar to what you would see in Microsoft Office or in Google Docs. So if I wanted to bold this, I would highlight it and bold it. I can italicize or underline as well. We could also remove the formatting if I would so choose. I can put this into number format, bullet format. This will help me indent. I can get rid of stuff. Ooh, I didn't want to get rid of that. What do I do? Oh, I hit the back button here. Oh, I kind of did want to get rid of that. Oh, we'll go back. This is my copy button and then my paste. So I could copy and then paste it. Tools, tools. Also, let's click on spell check here. So we see that I highlighted the word and it went to the spelling check for me. Let's look at the next question. Actually, I'm going to go back and I need to flag this question or mark it for review because I need to go back to it at a later time. Notice up here it's marked as well. All right, the next question, question four here, is going to ask me to use information from over here again. I can't stress enough, you may have to scroll up and down in this column here. So again, it's going to ask me to move stuff around, start each arrow from a black dot. So I have to add an arrow. And we, do you see how I did that? By moving this, the arrow will change spots. I can add a point on there. Or over there. If I want to get rid of it, I hit delete and I simply click on what I would like to delete. Now I'm going to go to the next question as well. New question, we have new information over here. So again, I want to read all of this information. If I need to highlight information, I will double click on it and then right click and hit highlight selection. I could also go up here and hit reset highlighting in order to highlight up there as well. So it's important to understand that there may be other options you can use as well that you need to look at. So this is a video I need to watch. And then it's going to give me information. So you may have to manipulate different things throughout the course of this. So this is like doing an experiment. So I'll hit start again.
So you would do that in order to answer the question here. All right, so let's move on to the next question. It uses the same information. So it's important that you read each question and you may need to watch different video tutorials. Today, while you are practicing, it may be a good idea to go through and look at the different tutorials for the different types of questions so that come the day of the test, you are not busy trying to figure out how to answer these questions. You already have a good idea on how to do that. Now, there may be multiple choice questions on the performance-based assessment as well. We're going to exit out of this test and go back to our Ohio online field test portal. That is nextgen.nuwaka.org if you'd already X'd out of there. Because there is one other feature that I would like to show you. What we're going to do is click on that field test portal again. I will sign in as a guest once again. I will choose grade level 10, but again, you choose whatever grade level you're in. I will hit yes. I will choose the end of year exam this time because I want to show you how to use the strike through on multiple choice questions. And there were no multiple choice questions on that performance-based assessment that we just practiced. So I'll click that. I'm going to turn the masking on. Now I'm just going to show you what another color choice might look like. I'm going to use reverse contrast because this is, uh, a, this is different than the black on white so that you can see you don't want to play with these the day of the test. You want to go in familiar with the choices that you are going to choose. So I'll hit select and notice how now the background is black and now the font is different colors. So this is pretty different than what I was used to. So we don't want to we don't want to do that the day of the test. So I'll click yes start my test. These again are those different tools that you have and descriptions of those. So I'll click begin test now. So, we see that this is a multiple choice test. In order to do the strike through, which is one of the options, we can do it one of two ways. We can look at the context menu and we can select strike through. Now, whichever one I choose, it will create a strike through. So, I just click on it to have it appear. And then, if I want to get rid of that, I simply click on it again. Another way to do this is I will I can use a, a right click which will have the same function so if I want a I can simply click on a as the strike through so that is how you would use the strike through feature I hope today's tutorial has given you a better understanding of the tools available to you on your science next generation assessment. Good luck and do your best.